As you might be aware, I'm a big fan of the YouTuber Casey Neistat, but there's one type of video that he tends to make, one sort of sentiment that he likes to put out there, that I find somewhat questionable, at least in the way that he's approaching it, which is this constant insistence to his audience to go, you know, live your dreams, go fulfill your ambitions, do what people say you can't, what you think you can't, get out there and go be what you want to be, because I came from nothing and I did the same thing you know I think there's this this odd sensation where there's some people who say like um, you know other people are privileged and therefore they get to do these things and I wasn't privileged so I don't get to then there's these people who were not privileged who grew up you know uh, maybe poor or under bad circumstances like Casey Neistat who managed to rise up and do something extraordinary and they're saying like hey look even I could do this so you can too but I think there's a little bit of a misguided message in there because you because you are not Casey Neistat I am not Casey Neistat you're not me either because we are people who are outliers, people who come from an extraordinary circumstance that most people don't come from. It has nothing to do with the privilege so much as luck or just random happenstance that put us into the positions we're in. And the only reason that we, you know, want, uh, like, would spread this message of like, everybody uh, do whatever you want and make sure you live your dreams is that we're happy doing it. But not everybody would necessarily be happy doing it, and it's not necessarily the best kind of life to live like Casey Neistat. It's not necessarily for you. It's not necessarily something that everybody should look up to. You shouldn't necessarily want to be doing these things that we're doing. Now, Casey had a kid when he was 17. His parents had split up. He ended up uh, you know, having to take care of his kid and his, uh, his wife. They divorced before too long. He moved to New York with basically nothing to go pursue a career in film. But the reason that all of that happened is because he happened to have a brother with a camera and a computer with video editing software, which he got to play around with, and he figured out what making movies would be like, which inspired him to want to do it. And he just happened to have the kind of personality, if anything, having a kid at 17 actually helped him uh, for his particular case because his personality was the type that he felt the need to constantly challenge himself and always go above and beyond to be working constantly. You know, he idolized New York, moved there so that he could have this frenetic lifestyle of working all the time. And through a series of fortunate events, he eventually became famous. No one else is going to live that scenario. You are not going to live the Casey Neistat life just by doing all the things you want to do and, and being a go-getter. You know, like, yes... It is possible for people in any circumstances to, to, uh, to, you know, achieve more than what they might think they can. And I'm all for spreading the message of like, hey, don't give up on yourself. But at the same time, I also think we should spread the message of, hey, know who you are. Know what's going to make you happy, how much you need to make you happy. You don't need to be Casey Neistat. Nobody really does. That man... His entire lifestyle is built around working constantly, and chances are, if you're like him, you already know that. You've already figured it out, because you're already working constantly, because that's your personality. If you're someone who has to be told to get up and go do things, you're not going to be Casey Neistat. No one has to tell him that, ever. He just wants to. And the same goes for me. I'm all for encouraging people to learn how to do things, you know. I will teach you how to write better, how to make analytical videos, I'll teach you how to maximize the reach of your content on YouTube, I'll, t I'll tell you everything I'm doing to reach the success I have or the level of output I have if nothing else. But you can't be me if, unless you, you know, like, I mean, there's some people out there who basically are in, who already have the mindset I have. They just need uh, a nudge in a different direction. They just need to hear, like, that one piece of advice that they're like, oh, that's what I'm missing. You know, oh, that's what I didn't think about yet. And then that'll help them out. But if you're someone who is nothing like me, you're not already someone who constantly works on your craft because it's all you want to do, you're never going to be like me. 
because I've just been doing this constantly for fucking 10 years just because I can't think of anything else to do. I have no other desires, you know? I've known so many people who were agonizing for years because they wanted to be creatives. They wanted to be artists. And they defined their self-worth by the fact that they were not artists yet. But they weren't, they didn't really have the mindset to work at it constantly. And they get accused by other people of that being their fault, which is not fucking fair. You're just not that person. You know, when Casey Neistat acts like, you know, I don't get why people uh, are always sitting around complaining about how working is hard. Working is easy. You got to have that mindset. You, know, you just happen to have that mindset, Casey. Not everybody feels that way. If working is, is painful for you, you know, or if you're someone who, who creativity has been difficult, maybe consider that creativity is not the right way to go. You know, maybe think about what's going to make you happy. I have several friends who you know, after a long time of like wishing that they were doing what I was doing, you know, wishing that they were just working constantly on, on art, realized that they, that's not actually what they want to do. My brother Victor, for example, you know, um, was beating himself up for years that he just wasn't working fast enough or, uh, or being inspired 24 seven the way that I was. And then eventually he realized, Hey, I, uh, found something else I'm passionate about having a girlfriend. You know, that he, uh, a person he really loves and he's been with for years now and they, you know, like that relationship is more important to him than his work. And so, you know, he realized, hey, maybe I shouldn't be, you know, so hung up about this. I'll just work at my own pace and be happy on the side. You know, happiness comes first. Contentedness comes first before all the extra shit. I would not be content not making content. I would not be. I would be losing my mind. You could give me all the money in the world. You could give me all the money. A perf I mean, look at this. I live in a fucking a, a mansion, you know, uh, essentially by myself for the moment. Um, I make a ton of money, you know, but I can't slow down. I could, if I wanted, like, there's no monetary reason for me to work as much, as hard as I do and on as many things as I do. Most of the projects I do are, are like, you know, my rap music doesn't profit me at all. My, uh, you know, Digi Bros doesn't profit me at all, my, my gaming channel. I just do it because I can't stop. I am just that kind of person, and you're probably not, you know? So before you go worrying about how you're not, you know, doing as much as I am, think about if you even want that. If you would even be happy working constantly to no, for no reason, you know, to no avail. like. If I had all the money in the world and a perfectly secure place and everything, I'd still be working this hard. And same goes for Casey Neistat. The man does not need to work as much as he does. He does not need to make a daily vlog. He didn't even monetize his channel for the first, like, five years of its existence. He only monetized it so that he could pay for his kid's college fund, you know? That was the only reason he finally turned on monetization. The man didn't need the money. He was doing it purely out of just the desire. And I also think that this also happens where people get so hung up about money that sometimes that makes them doubt the art they're making. Some of my friends have been concerned about the fact that they're not, you know, making enough money um, even though they're giving their all to this great art and they're like doubting the worth of the art because the money's not there. And I'm like, you know, you should be doing the art because you want to. If you want it to be a job, make it a job. You can make it a job. You know, if you want to do, like, YouTube as a career, become a daily vlogger. Become a, uh, you know, someone who makes, like, a video at least once a week that's on a template that comes out all the time. If you want money, that's what you do. If you just want to do what you love, you know, then do what you love and worry about how it makes money or if you even need it to make money. Just make money some other way, you know. Um, find a way to make all those planets align, but, like... Don't beat yourself up about the fact that you can't get out a video every week and make money if that's not what would make you happy anyways. If you would not be happy making constant content, then don't make constant content because having the money is not going to make you happy when you're doing something you don't want to do, you know? So just, I think that the reason guys like Casey and myself end up making all these videos where we encourage people to be artists is that we're really... 
not speaking to everybody. We're speaking to the one guy. We're speaking to the one guy who's basically already that and just needs that little push, you know? When I make a video teaching you how to write better, I don't expect everybody in my audience to suddenly become an amazing writer. But there's probably someone who's already pretty good who just needed that one tip and it changes in a subtle way. Because I got a lot of that growing up. A lot of how I grew as an artist was someone told me one thing that made me rethink how I was doing what I would have kept doing anyways, you know? Um, and therefore I changed it slightly. But don't think that just because we're putting out these videos, they're like, yeah, follow your dreams, do, do everything. It's like, maybe that's not you. <laughs> and think about what you want from your life before you go, you know, blaming yourself for not being Casey fucking Neistat, who is a, like myself, human content machine. He exists for no purpose other than to make videos. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Happy trails in the future. Don't be like me. I'm a bad influence, as you can see.